Hello everybody. I have this Febco backflow preventer as part of my irrigation system. It's a pretty common item. And fired it up this year uh, in the spring. And lo and behold, I have a, a crack in the ball valve. So somehow water got back behind the ball, somewhere between the ball and the back side of the ball and the seat and uh, that little bit of water that's in there expanded and cracked the valve and as I look at the situation I've got here there are no unions so I can't take it out easily and this joint here is sweated in and that end is solvent welded so I've looked at it a little bit and Trying to figure out the easiest way to replace that valve without taking apart that sweated fitting. And so what I think I'm going to do is cut the PVC and then see if I can twist the whole assembly off of that thread. Uh, but the problem here is I don't have enough clearance. You can see that this section here is pretty wide and there's not enough room to swing it and unscrew it uh, without interfering with the wall. So I'm going to see if I can take apart the valve a little bit. I've actually got some of the fasteners apart and then realized maybe I ought to shoot a video. But I'm going to take this section of the valve off and hopefully I'll be able to uh, unscrew everything screw the new valve back on and then only have to solvent weld the PVC which would be a whole heck of a lot easier than having to sweat that fitting and then re-sweat it. So I'm going to give it a try. I'll show you a video in a little bit to show you how successful I was, if at all. Just a little warning, after I got the valve back together again, the back bloat the anti-siphon valve back together again. It leaked. And turns out that there are some plastic seals around the two hex allen head stainless steel screws that hold the diaphragm body to the um, to the overall valve. So I don't know whether there were two seals or whether there are four seals, but this is what they look like when they come out. So these are the seals that, are, again, are under or behind the two hex Allen head stainless steel bolts or screws that hold that diaphragm, that round diaphragm body to the valve body. I ended up just using some plastic flat washers. Uh, as a replacement to get it sealed and it seems to be working okay. But that's the caveat in disassembling that valve in that some of the seals might leak when you put it back together again. I didn't even realize these seals were there until I started to look for the source of a little drip I was getting. So be forewarned. In the interest of full disclosure, I do have to warn you about something. This is an edit I'm putting into the front of the video. And that is once I opened that housing and removed the diaphragm, uh, once I put the diaphragm back, it's leaking. Uh, and the diaphragm is pretty old. So this, is, this diaphragm is about, let's see, 15, yeah, it's actually 15 years old. So, I'm not sure whether I had a leak there or not, but once I got everything back together again, I had a small, very, very tiny leak, small drip. Actually, not enough to be concerned about, but uh, I, just want, I don't know whether disassembling it caused that or whether it's just old age and, you know, when you disassemble a seal or a gasket and try to put it back together again, it just doesn't seal properly. So, I'm warning you in advance, uh, that, that diaphragm gasket's pretty expensive. Uh, if you shop around on eBay, you can buy a whole gasket kit which has every rubber part that goes in this valve. So that's the warning to you. If you as you disassemble this valve, you could have a leak after you put it all back together again. 
Again, I don't know whether mine was leaking or not beforehand, but it certainly had a very small drip after it was reassembled. I have the valve partially disassembled, and now I'm going to go in and remove those two stainless steel hex Allen head screws and see if I can pull the rest of this valve body off and see whether that gives you enough clearance to be able to swing the valve and unscrew it from the fitting. Well, I have the valve body just about as disassembled as I can get it. If I need a little bit more clearance, I can probably take this cap off and give myself an extra quarter inch. I got my pipe cut, and now I'm going to see if I have enough clearance to twist it off. Okay, looks like I'm good. Well, so the top part of the valve cleared. Yeah. So yeah, I got enough clearance now to be able to remove it without having to unsweat that joint. There it is. The new ball valve is in place. I have to put the backflow preventer valve parts back on. And then I've got to decide whether I'm going to uh, add a piece of PVC and a couple of slip joints or whether I'm just going to come in with a uh, black rubber hose and clamp around it with hose clamps. But that's how you do it. Take the valve apart. It allows you to swing it and you, with, if you have enough clearance between the valve and the wall. And that way you don't have to unsweat any fittings. Thanks for watching and uh, give me a thumbs up if you found this at all helpful or entertaining.